The National Broadcasting Company presents Christopher London, created especially for radio by the most widely read mystery story writer in the world, Earl Stanley Gardner, produced and directed by William N. Robeson, and starring Mr. Glenn Ford. I am Christopher London, private investigator and sometimes student of the teachings of the Orient. In the faraway monastery of the moon of yesterday in the hills of western China, I learned many things. I like to think that one of them was tolerance, but I find it hard, hard to be tolerant of greed and murder. Yet any man who agrees to look for a beautiful missing heiress along the San Francisco waterfront is asking for trouble, and usually he gets it. In this case, it was me, and I got it. It started in the lavish Knob Hill home of Arthur J. Manners, attorney at law, where I had been invited on a professional basis. Fix up your drink, London? No, thanks. I asked you to come here because I didn't want to talk about this thing at the office. Oh, that's a nice place you have here. Awfully nice. Oh, it's too big. Too expensive. Now, first I'd better show you the young lady's picture. Hmm. To Arthur, my dear friend and guardian, Helen. Oh, she's a beautiful girl, Mr. Manners. Ah, too beautiful. Too rich, too spoiled. From the time her parents died five years ago, Helen Falconer has been a constant worry to me. And now this. This time I'm really worried. Now, let's see. You said a week ago she arrived on the plane from Mexico. Yes, for her first visit in more than a year. She wired me when to expect her, and she was on the plane. I checked. I found somebody who remembers seeing her get into a dark blue sedan. And that's all, and then she disappeared, vanished. And just when I have to produce her in court next week for an accounting of my guardianship. What about relatives, friends? No living relatives and no friends in San Francisco. She's never here for more than a few days at a time. Doesn't live anywhere for more than a couple of months at a time. The French Riviera, Rio, New York, Acapulco. Only time I know where she is is when she wires me for money. Well, you've checked the hospitals, I suppose, in the morgue. Certainly. Why haven't you gone to the police? Afraid to. That's why you're here. Uh, where did I put that? Uh, oh. Here, you better take this. Uh, driver's license. Yeah, she applied for it last time she was here. Age, height, hair, eyes, and so on. Thumbprint, signature. Might help. It might indeed. You'll know her by a ring she wears. She never takes it off. Antique emerald ring. Heavy gold setting. Stone engraved with a serpent and an arrow. Find that ring and you'll know who it is even if she has her head in a sack. Yes, come in. There's a Mr. Lawrence Scoville. Oh, tell him to go away. I'm busy. I said I'd call him if I heard anything. Yes, sir. Oh, Scoville. I should have told you about him, London. Claims he's engaged to Helen. Met her recently in New York. Well, maybe, maybe not. Says she wired him she was coming and to meet her here in San Francisco. Spends his days mooning around my office. I wish he'd go back to New York. He gets on my nerves. Well, maybe I'd better start by seeing him. No. Yes, just a waste of time. He doesn't know a thing. You interest me, Mr. Manners. Have you changed your mind about wanting me to locate this girl? Changed my mind? No. Why? Because you're stalling. I... Yes, I suppose I am. But it's because I'm worried. I don't know how much I should confide in anybody. In that case, we're both wasting our time. Goodbye, Mr. Manners. Now, wait. No, London, sit down. Please. All right. I have reason to believe that Helen has involved herself in some sort of a smuggling operation. For the thrill of it, nothing more. That may be that the headquarters of this gang is at a waterfront dive named El Toro or El Torero, something of the sort. Mind you, I don't say it's true, but it, it may be true. Now, you must have some reason for believing it. Well, I'm not at liberty to give my reasons. I, I merely warn you that searching for her may lead you into some danger. Well, in a way, Mr. Manners, danger is my business. I'll keep in touch with you. Well, now, I'll say this. Nobody ever began a search for a missing girl with more clues. Waterfront dive named El Toro, El Torero, or something of the sort. Well, it wasn't in the phone book, but I thought I knew how to find it. You take a stroll along the Embarcadero in the fog, and you might find anything. Tom. I'm sorry. It's okay. I didn't hurt you, did I? No. This fog is pretty thick, isn't it? What's the matter? You lost? 
Well, in a way. I was looking for a place. Uh, I, uh, I forget the name. Stupid. Yeah. What you want there? Oh, a drink. I don't mind if I do. <laughs> well, fine. Let's go. Oh, yes, I remember it now. Oh, that's swell, honey. El Torel. El Toro. That's it. A joint. Strictly a dive. Well, you know where it is? What do you want to go there for? Well, I told you. Yeah. You said a drink. What is it really? A dame? Well, maybe. You were uh, going to buy a drink anyway. Well, certainly. Okay, honey. Only no dame you're looking for is going to be at El Toro. going to sit at a table. Uh, sure. How about right here? Huh? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I got the chair here. Hey. Now that I see you in the light, you know you ain't a bad-looking guy. What's your name? Smith? Yeah. Yeah, Smith. <laughs> I thought it was. I'm Babe. What'll it be, folks? Make mine a ginger bourbon. I think you can find an El Toro or its equivalent on any dock side in the world. The retreat of the happy companions in Hong Kong was another El Toro. And the sanctuary of the affectionate friends in Shanghai was another. El Toro. A small, dark place within the sound of the sea where men speak in low voices to each other of their plans and schemes to catch fortune by the tail. In the small, dark place, there were seven or eight seafaring men, a couple of women sitting together, quietly, waiting, I think, for something that would never come. Well, there was a piano player, a bartender, and a waiter. And Babe and me. At another time, perhaps El Toro would have been raucous with the sounds of fighting and of laughter. But tonight, well, tonight it was brooding in the fog, waiting. Hey, Babe, I've been looking all over for you. You found me. Uh, Mr. Smith, this is Gus. Say hello to the man, Gus. Hello, hello. Hello, Gus. Who asked you to sit down? My feet hurt. Just make port, Gus? I'm Mary Maloney. Mm. Irish ship? Greek. Mm. How long you been gone, Gus? Oh, don't you remember? I should remember how long you've been gone. I never even seen you before. Babe, listen. Get lost. I'm busy. I went up to the room before I come looking for you. I brought a case of some kind of Greek stuff. Greeks don't drink. Oh, they don't, huh? What, uh... What else did you bring? We're still married, ain't we? Who says we ain't? Yeah. I brought some perfume and stuff. Well, come on, then, you overgrown droop. Is it okay if I take a poke at Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith's a friend of mine. Oh, but, babe, I just got... Okay. Just one, though. Stand up, Mr. Smith. You're in the wrong port. It'll be a pleasure. Hey, babe, where's my upper plate? Here, Droop. Oh, that's lucky. Don't even crack. That's a nice left you got, Mr. Smith. No hard feelings. No, not at all. Then try my left. I don't suppose I was out more than a minute or so. But when I came to, Gus and Babe were gone. And three new customers had arrived. Two men and a girl. They sat at a table in a shadowed corner. Almost certainly the girl was the one I was looking for. Okay, mister? Uh, yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. Oh, I'll clean this up. Oh, what hit me? Uh, first day's home from a voyage. Gus always does that. He don't mean no harm. What do you have? Say, those uh, three people over there, gentlemen. They just come in? Uh, oh, yeah. While you wasn't paying no attention. Uh -huh. Here's a buck. I guess you must have dropped it. Thanks. You know them? Not me, mister. I don't know nothing. Uh, do they come here very often? Oh, mister, why don't you go home? We have enough trouble around here without strangers. It just ain't healthy for strangers here. Especially strangers with noses. Noses? Which they stick into other people's business. Oh. No. Why don't you go home? I recognized the girl from the photograph Manners had shown me. Although her hair was a different shade, 
She was heavily suntanned, and the clothes she wore left so little to the imagination that it was hard to concentrate on her face. But if I had needed further proof, I saw the flash of emerald green as she lifted her hand to her cheek. The men with her? One was Oriental, Manchurian probably. The other may have come from the Middle East. Now, suddenly they seemed to come to some sort of agreement. I got up. The Manchurian spoke an inaudible word or two to the girl, and the two men left El Toro together. Well, it seemed obvious that they would soon return, so I took advantage of the moment. <clears throat> Excuse me, Helen Falconer? What? Who? You're Helen Falconer? That's what I thought you said. I never heard of her. Have you got a minute? Sit down. Yeah, thanks. Now, you don't want to change your mind. About what? About being Helen Falcon. I told you I never heard that name before. What's this all about? You know, it's funny. I got an idea that I was intended to meet you here. You were intended to meet me here? Yeah. Or, uh, Helen Falcon, huh? Oh, we're back to that again, huh? You know, I'm getting kind of tired of Helen... What's her name already? Did you really want to meet her? Yeah. You see, she was supposed to look exactly like you. Oh, you don't know her then? Well, the man showed me a picture. Arthur J. Manners, an attorney. And she looks like me? Exactly. Um, how do you like the way she looks? Oh, I like it. <laughs> Have you got a name? Yeah. Christopher London. I'm... Now, what difference does it make? Call me Helen if you want to. Helen, what's her name? Cigarette? Helen? Thanks. Yeah. That's a good-looking case. Gold? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, it's shiny as a mirror. Here, take it back before it sticks to me. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, here's the light. You know, I'm wondering about you. As a matter of fact, I'm wondering about me, too. What do you mean? Well, I'm, I'm wondering if I could get up right now and walk out of here. And forget me. Yeah. Yeah, and forget you. Do you want to try? No, not yet. <laughs> Say, that's a beautiful ring. Is it an emerald? Oh, it's just some kind of green stone. Yeah, mind if I look at it? Yeah. It's carved serpent and arrow. Well, I imagine that's pretty valuable. Aren't you kind of taking a chance wearing it around a place like this? I usually wear it turned around with a stone on the other side, like this. Why not simply leave it at home, then? Oh, no. I never take it off. Yeah, sort of good luck charm. Sort of. Has it brought you any? Good luck? Yeah. <laughs> oh, all the time, Christopher. All the time. Helen. What? Oh, yes, that's me, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Hey, does the name Scoville mean anything to you? Lawrence Scoville? You know more people that I never heard of. Helen, listen. I'm serious. Now, do you know who you are? Do you know where you are? Where were you a week ago tonight? Oh, two weeks ago. Well, a month ago. Don't you know? Of course I know. Well, then where? Why do you care? Well, answer me. No. Answer me, Helen. Can't you remember? <laughs> Now, where are you going? Don't come with me. Why? They'll be back soon, and I have to go. Not without me. Waiter, how much? A buck twenty. All right, here you are. Come on, Helen. Christopher, don't. Come on. Now, what are you afraid of? Christopher, can you see in this fog? Oh, not much. Well, neither can I. Hold on to me. Helen, it's important. Who are the men who are, who are, the men you are with? The men who are coming back. Hold me. Now, don't you understand? You've got to answer my questions. I don't know. I don't know. Hold me, Christopher. <sighs> Christopher. Helen. No. You mustn't ask me anything. It's not safe. Well, if you're in danger, then... I'm in no danger. I know what I'm doing, and I'm safe and protected. But don't ever try to find me again, Christopher, because that's dangerous for you. Worse danger than... Look out! Where is he? Over here, Inspector. Now, you, what's the date? Why, well, the fifth thing. You know what city you're in? 
Oh, San Francisco. What's your name? Who I? Oh, Christopher London. Well, I think he's okay, Inspector. Oh. He started coming to a minute ago. Yeah. Hello, London. Oh, Inspector Griffith. Ooh. It's too bad you weren't here a while ago. What happened? Well, I, I'll tell you, I we was standing along here somewhere with my arms around one of the most beautiful women I ever saw. Very funny. Hey. You didn't see who hit you? No. Might have been a sailor from somewhere in the Middle East. Maybe a Manchurian. You kill me, London. What were you doing down here? Well, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Yeah, but I seem to have been robbed. You surprised? Yeah, let's see. Our wallet's gone. Letters, cards, money. <laughs> oh, what do you know? They missed my cigarette case. Well, you can sign a report in the morning. How do you feel? Bad, bad, Inspector. Not good. Get in. We'll take you home. You want to stop the receiving hospital? Oh, that song will take care of me. Oh, yeah, that Chinese boy of yours. Is he a doctor, too? No, a song can do anything. And do it with quotations. <laughs> Say, Inspector, I'm going to ask you a favor. Yeah? All right, here's my cigarette case that those guys missed. It's got some fingerprints on it. Will you have them checked fast? Give it to me. Not careful. Careful of those prints. Huh? Tell your grandmother. You know, it takes a while. Even if I told you where to look in the file? Well, that might help. A driver's license. Issued to Helen Falconer, this city. What's the angle? Well, if there is an angle, you'll be the first to know. All right, you can let me out here. Okay. San Francisco Police, 11 p.m. San Francisco Police. Helen, F A L C O N E R. Dan, I want that cigarette case back. You'll get it after I check. As I dragged myself up to my apartment, I hoped that our song would be waiting for me with tea and many ancient Chinese quotations. He was, but he was not alone. I had a visitor in a gray flannel suit and a striped silk tie. Mr. Lennon, I'm Larry Scoville. I, I wanted to talk to you about Helen Falconer, but the way you look, I... Well, I mean, I... Well, I guess it'll have to wait until tomorrow. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> That's all right. My injuries aren't fatal. Now, sit down. I'll be with you in a minute. All right. Call me to London. I will make first aid. Yeah. Oh. This warm, damp cloth will soon erase the signs of violence yeah. as the soft snow hides the scars of the gardener's toil. Is it still bleeding? There is no more blood now. May this helpless one inquire what happened? Oh, hand me the towel. Oh, here. Thanks. I don't know our song, but I got an idea that this is not the first nor the last blood that will be shed in this case. Here you are. Has Mr. Scoville been waiting long? Not long. Yeah, that looks a little better. All right, I'll see what he wants. Oh, bring us something to drink, will you? That's all there is to it, Mr. London. I was in Mr. Manor's office and happened to overhear something that made me think he'd ask you to search for Helen. If you can't tell me anything about where she is, or if you don't know, okay, I, I understand. But can you tell me this? Is she still alive? That's no good worrying, Scoville. Now, tell me again. You say somebody broke into your room at the hotel. Now, at what time? Oh, it must have been between 8 and 10.30 tonight. And nothing was taken? Nothing at all. You're sure about Certain. it? Certain. And you've no idea what they were looking for? I can't imagine. All right. Uh, Scoville, have you known Helen a long time? Well, only a few weeks, really, but it was long enough for us to fall in love. Then you don't know very much about her. I mean, who her friends are or what she does here and abroad. Well, I... No, I guess that's true, but... I'll, I'd... Get, I'll get it all, son. Why, Mr. Manners. Good evening, London. Oh, come in. I, uh, I was in the neighborhood, and I thought I'd take a chance that you were still awake because I... Oh, Scoville. Hello. Well, you had an accident, London? No more humiliating than painful. That's nothing. Oh, sit down, sit down. Oh, no time. I'm on my way home. I, I just stopped in to tell you... Uh, this concerns you too, Scoville. To tell you that I've seen my ward and talked with her. Oh, you did? Is she all right? Quite all right. When, when can I see her? I'm afraid... Well, I'm afraid you can't see her. She, uh... Well, the fact is, she's fallen in love with somebody else, and she wants you to forgive and forget, I believe the expression goes. No. No, I don't believe it. She's very definite about it. 
Now, London, I'm glad to say that my suspicions were entirely unfounded. I'll send you a check in the morning, and if you'll return that driver's license, we can consider the matter closed. I'm sorry, Manners. I haven't got the license. I lost it. Oh. Well, that's not important, then. Good night. After Manners left, I got my hat and coat, in spite of our song's protests. And then I had trouble with Scoville. You know something about Helen, don't you? You're going out to meet her now. Scoville, there's nothing I can tell I'm you. I'm going with you. I, I don't believe Manners. I don't believe she'd do that to Oh, me. it'll be all right, Scoville. We'll talk about it tomorrow. You go back to your hotel and I'll call you there in the morning. But London, I... Was... Oh, Mr. London, it is not for the trembling lamb to give counsel to the lion, yeah. but... Sure, sure, sure. You don't want me to go out, huh? In the night, the tender rice plants sleep. Yeah, yeah. And sleeping grow. Look, I know, I know. I'm taking the car, our song. If anybody calls, you don't know when I'll be back. I left poor Scoville standing on the street. I got my car out of the garage and headed for the waterfront. For a while, I thought another car was following me, but the fog made it impossible to be sure. I parked my car about two blocks from El Toro and started to walk up the Embarcadero. I thought I heard steps behind me, but, but when I halted, they halted too. And then when I started again... They started. I'd walked about a block when... Scoville. Back a block, I found a telephone at an all-night drugstore and was lucky enough to get Inspector Griffith at Homicide. Okay, London, I've got it all. Go back and wait till we get there. Now, just a second. Did you find out anything about those fingerprints? Yeah, I'll bring the cigarette case with me. Well, did the prints match? Yeah, they matched. I thought they would. So what? So now you know who some dame is named Helen Faulkner. Wait for us. I didn't wait for Griffith and the men from Homicide. I passed the crumpled figure that had been Lawrence Scoville, alone and shrouded in the fog. There was nothing I could do or say... I didn't pause. He had been alive, and now he was dead, but uselessly, wantonly dead. In front of El Toro, there was a taxi waiting. The door was open. A girl came out, her face concealed by a veil. But I saw a flash of emerald green as she entered the cab. There was no need for me to follow her. I knew where she was going. I knew where she had to be going. And I was sure that with some fancy illegal driving, I could get there first. Parked my car in the shadows. A taxi pulled up not more than a minute later. I followed her up the gravel walk as quietly as I could and stood behind her as she knocked on the door. Yes? Arthur, what happened? I was... I'm right <gasps> behind you. Well, shall we go in? Uh, what is this? Did you come here together? Close the door, Manners. This is no time for jealous quarrels. Well, now, what is this, London? What do you want? I want to make amends. For the death of a young man who died because I unconsciously led him to his murderer. We were in Manor's elegant study, the three of us. The girl, still beautiful, but pale and tense. Arthur J. Manners, attorney at law, calm now, almost too self assured. <laughs> and Christopher London who probably looked as if he'd spent a night in a bowling alley as a stand-in for a ten-pin. Now, Manners was being pleasant. No, I'd never seen him quite so pleasant. Well, I'm glad that you and Helen could meet here. We met at El Toro. With the briefing you gave me, I couldn't have missed her. You arranged our meeting. You wrote the script and directed the play. But you didn't figure on this ending. Christopher, listen to me. What's your name, Helen? Well, Arthur, what's he talking about? What do you mean, London? If you've got anything to say, say it. She's Helen Falconer, you know that. Christopher, I, I can explain about those awful men at El Toro, but it was just a silly... Well, I don't know. I, I get into things like oh, that. Oh, you fools. Don't you see how transparent you've been? How clear as glass? Get out of here. Get out, man. Sit down. That's better. Now, let's talk. Helen Falconer was your ward. You managed her estate. 
She was out of the country most of the time, and your expenses were heavy. A house like this costs a lot to buy and to live in. And a girl like this runs into money, too. I think you've been taking Helen Falconer's money for a long time. So at last she became suspicious and decided to fly up from Mexico for an accounting. Well, that's true, Christopher, but I was wrong. Oh, very wrong. Now, wait. Apparently, you've got the absurd idea that this girl is not Helen Falconer. Well, would a fingerprint prove it to you? Not on a driver's license, nor a cigarette case. You know, it was a smart idea having your girlfriend apply for a license under the name of Helen Falconer. But it only proves the murder was well-planned and long premeditated. You, you, whatever your name is. Christopher, please. Is that I... your ring on your finger? You wear it constantly? You never take it off? You both told me that. Then why isn't the skin underneath the ring white? Why is it as sun-tanned as the rest of your hand? Don't try it, Manners. Don't. <coughs> Christopher. Christopher. Ah, no, don't worry. I think he'll live long enough to die as the state directs. Well, I, I just did what he told me. I... I didn't know why. I, I... I... Will you... You believe me? Don't you, Christopher? Sure. Sure, I believe you. And I'll bet the jury will, too. I'll bet they won't give you more than ten years. Yes, our song, you and your revered ancestors were... Well, they were so right. Oh! Yes, greed and duplicity go hand in hand with murder. Arthur Manners killed Helen Falconer on the day she arrived from Mexico. Her body, well, may never be found. But Manners will die because he shot Lawrence Scoville. Uh, Scoville must have worried him. Oh, yes. The murderers must worry. And he went through Scoville's hotel room because he was afraid the boy might have a picture of the true Helen Falconer. Then he had to kill him because he followed me. If Scoville had seen the girl I thought was Helen, well, the whole thing would have fallen apart. And the young lady? Oh, the misguided girlfriend of an attorney at law. <laughs> oh, it's time off for good behavior. She will still be as beautiful when she gets out. But why were you called in at all? I was the patsy. If the question were ever to come up, I would have been called on to swear that I had found and identified the missing Helen Falconer and returned her to her worried guardian. That way, Manners would have gone right on receiving the money from the dead Helen Falconer's estate. Only... Only what? On, yes, only Manners forgot that the phony Helen Falconer's license had been issued less than six months ago. And Manners forgot that he had told me that the real Helen Falconer had not been backed in the States for more than a year. <laughs> well, our song, we wouldn't have made that mistake... No, would we? Oh, no, Mr. Lawson. <laughs> this humble one can manufacture his own official document when necessary. Yeah, you know, sometimes our song, I think, is a pity that we didn't choose a life of crime. Oh, no, Mr. London. It's very appealing, but unrewarding. Remember it is said, if a man walk even tippy-toe on road of wrongdoing, his reward surely waits him at road's end. The hangman's noose. Uh, how true. But you meet such attractive gals along the way. That was Christopher London, starring Glenn Ford, and created especially for radio by the world's most widely read mystery story writer, Earl Stanley Gardner. Christopher London is produced and directed by William N. Robeson and was tonight written by Mindred Lord with music composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. Mr. Ford's supporting company included Joan Banks as the phony Helen Falconer, Ben Wright as Arthur Manners, Charlie Long as our song, Florence Hallop, Ted DeCorsia, Peter Leeds, Will Wright, and Stacey Harris. Be with us again next week when Christopher London returns. What's on NBC today? One hour from now, you'll hear Charles Boyer and Dorothy McGuire in the Theater Guild on the air. And then the American album of familiar music later today. Now, stay tuned for Phil Harris and Alice Faye, then Sam Spade on NBC.